when yes. this is just uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Uh, okay. Right. Okay. Okay, uh, how do you say our followed by ten E's? Re. Okay, now now say that as if uh, your life it's depended on it and you were being chased by them. <laughs>Alright guys, so for this video we're going to cover swing timing, in particular what is swing timing, why some rogues should do it, why some rogues shouldn't do it, exactly how much DPS do you even gain from swing timing because there's a lot of confusion as far as how much DPS you actually gain timing swings. Now I do go into a lot of detail in the video so if you want to skip around to the certain sections that you want to watch, there's timestamps in the description. And as always guys, if you want to help support the free content that I create, you can check out these sword and dagger hoodies in the description below, you can check it out, all of that's helps support all the free content that I make so thank you all right so let's go into how you actually do swing timing and why it is important so firstly what is swing timing well swing timing is timing your ability to happen right after your character auto attacks with your main weapon so you can see here I'm in Damal hitting these uh, invincible ghosts so you can see this blue bar here this is my swing timer so if you don't have a swing timer yet you can get uh, this swing timer from my UI guide it will be linked in the description below as well but uh, you can see this is basically counting my uh, swing timing now your swing timer will change based on the weapon you have so right now I've got a Peugeot in my main hand and you can see it's 1.7 speed so that's the speed of each swing but if I were to for example change to a Claw the Black Drake you can see now my swing timer is longer because my main hand weapon is slower. So now it's a 2.6 speed swing. So that's just one thing to keep in mind uh, between swords and daggers, you have slightly different swing timers. So it's important to get used to every time you change your new main hand, you're going to have to adapt to your swing timing a little bit. And this also changes if you have slice and dice up, you have haste up, etc. It's going to make you attack faster and it's going to change your swing timing. So for example, if I get a couple points here and slice and dice, right? Get a slice and dice up and you notice my swings are faster now because I have slice and dice up. So all of these things affect your swing timer. So just keep that in mind that your swing timer isn't static. It does change based on how fast you are attacking and the speed of your main hand weapon. Okay, so let's talk about how you actually do your swing timer. So to ideally swing time, you want your ability, so that's Sinister Strike, Backstab, or Eviscerate to go off at the start of your attack. So you can see here at the start of the bar, you want to go off now. You want it to go off now. So every time this bar is at the start of my swing, that's when I want the ability to land. Now the confusion some people usually get is they, they ask me sometimes, hey Snow, I've been told that you want to use your ability at the end of your bar, you want to use your ability at the start of the bar, which is it? Well, it's kind of both because it depends on your ping. Now, if you're someone like me who plays with say 130 to 150 ping, you can see up here, it's um, going to be slightly different because I want to press my sinister strike a little bit earlier than other people because I have more lag, right? So I have more ping lag. So if I press it just towards the end of the bar now here, my Sinister Strike is going to land and buffer into the start of the next swing. So usually I press it right here and it's going to land at the start of each swing. So as long as I press it towards the end-ish of this bar, my swing is going to actually land and connect my Sinister Strike right at the start of uh, each auto attack. But if you're someone who wants to play it safe or you have a really fast ping, you might do it later than me or you might literally do it right at the start here, like right now right when it resets. So the main thing to keep in mind at the end of the day is that you just want the ability, whatever ability you're using, to connect at the start of each swing. So every time this bar is at the start of the bar, that's when you want to see that attack actually land. So this goes if I swap back to my dagger here for example. So if I go back to backstabs, I want it to connect here, right? I want it to go at the start of each swing. So whether that means for you, with a bit of lag, you're pressing the button towards the end of the swing, or if you have a fast ping or fast reaction time, you're pressing it right at the start of each swing. That doesn't matter as long as the ability is going off and activating at the start of each swing. So as long as it's when my mouse is here, that's when you want the ability to be hitting the mob, 
basically. Okay. Now, if you want a best case scenario, usually people try to batch it just at the end of the swing like this to make it land just when the, the swings reset and then it will batch into the start of each swing. Okay, now to show you why swing timing is important, we have to look at our bar here again. So you can see this is my swing timer bar. So there's two things that can interrupt this swing from completing. So the damage of each swing always registers right when it finishes, right? So you don't get the damage for each auto attack until it hits the end of the bar. So this bar is basically tracking our auto attacks. Now, if our swing gets interrupted before this bar reaches the end, we basically just wasted all of that time, right? So for example, let's let's take a worst case scenario. Let's get our claw back in here. All right, so now we have a claw here. We have a nice slow swing going on, 2.6 speed swing. Now, what would happen if our swing gets interrupted when we get to say like 2.2 seconds into the swing? So let's say somewhere around here in this bar. That means we just wasted 2.2 seconds swinging but not getting auto attack damage. So if your swing ever gets interrupted, that's what messes with your auto attack damage. And as people who have raided and looked at the logs know, about half or more of your damage is often coming from those auto attacks. So auto attack damage is really, really important. So you don't want your swing to get interrupted towards the end of a swing. Now, things that can interrupt your swing are mainly sword spec and wind fury on horde. So those two things tend to reset your swing quite often. And if that reset happens towards the end of a swing, that's gonna waste your auto attack time. So I'll show you guys an example now. Okay, so here we have my Twim M's fight from the other week. So I'm going to show you what happens when your swing gets reset. So here you can see it right here on the screen here. You can see here's my swing timer. So I get a backstab, I get a slice and dice up. And you can see right here my swing is going to get reset. Like right there you go. You see, you see that little reset right there? So that's my swing timer getting reset right there. Imagine if that reset happened towards the end of the bar. That would have been really, really bad, right? So. That's why any time we use an ability like Sinister Strike, Backstab, or Eviscerate, so those three in particular, we want to try to use them towards the end of a swing. Okay, so back here, this is why we want to practice and get used to swinging our swing timer on a rhythm where it attacks at the start of each swing. Now, once you're on a raid with your buffs and everything, you can get into a rhythm, right? We get a slice and dice time up, and then we, for example, with this call, I'll go now. And then we go now. And then we go now, and then we go now. So you can almost get into this like dance dance revolution kind of thing where you have the rhythm of the swing timer in your head and you're just pressing your sinister strike or backstep key kind of according to the beat of your swing, if that makes sense. Now, the question some of you guys might be asking is, does everyone need to swing time? Uh, well, no, not exactly. Alliance Dagger Rogues in particular do not have to do swing timing because the Alliance Dagger Rogues don't have Wind Fury procs and you're not sword spec so you don't have sword procs either. So if you're an Alliance Dagger Rogue, the only thing that can really reset your swing is maybe if you have a Hand of Justice or a Hodge Trinket, but those don't proc enough and you shouldn't really worry about that for swing timing. So essentially if you are an Alliance Dagger Rogue, you don't have to care about swing timing. It does basically nothing for you. you there's no gain to be had really for an Alliance Dagger Rogue to swing time. But everyone else can do swing time. Okay, so now let's talk about how much DPS you actually gain from swing timing. So by timing your swings, this is how much DPS you gain in a perfect scenario. So when I say perfect scenario, I mean your ability usage lands 0.1 second after each swing. So right at the start of every swing here, your ability is landing perfectly timed. You're doing this during, so you're popping adrenaline rush and still perfectly swing timing without capping energy. Basically, you're, you're basically doing swing timing perfectly every time. Now, if you do it perfectly, as a Horde Sword Rogue, you get a whopping 35 DPS, which is a, a solid amount. So I always like to use the example of a DFT. So for example, a DFT upgrade for a lot of rogues is around uh, 20 DPS during the Blackwing Lair era. It was about a 20 DPS upgrade. So this is a 35 DPS upgrade if you swing time perfectly as a Horde Sword Rogue. Now as an Alliance Sword Rogue, you gain 7 DPS. So this is a lot less because on Alliance side, you don't get Wind Fury, which is the main reason why Horde 
rogues care about swing timing is because of wind fury and especially sword horde rogues who get both wind fury and sword spec procs so on the lance you're not getting that wind fury so you're, you're pretty much just getting the sword spec procs which don't happen as often so you just gain 7 dps from perfect swing timing now finally as a horde dagger rogue you gain 11 dps so overall you can see that it's uh, very favored in terms of horde sword rogues really getting a lot of swing timing and the other two is kind of beneficial but not as crazy of a dps upgrade if you do it perfectly okay so now let's talk about average swing timing gain so this is what you would gain if you were instead of 0.1 seconds after every swing getting your ability timed perfectly this is 0.2 seconds after every swing so i changed it i delayed it a little bit so that you weren't getting that perfect timer every time so this is still pretty good but it's a little bit slower a little bit less perfect and i'm not using swing timing during adrenaline rush so what i mean by that is uh, let's swap to my dagger for example so let's swap back to my dagger here and horde dagger rogues in particular do not uh, like using swing timing during adrenaline rush because there's a chance of capping so let's say for example we get a nice slice and dice up okay um, and then we get adrenaline rush going now I might be swing timing here, but if I miss, for example, here, and and I don't get that next backstep in before my tick ends and I get more energy, I'm gonna overcap, right? So there's a reason a lot of horde dagger rogues do not like uh, timing swings during adrenaline rush because if they get a miss at a bad timing, it can mean they just wasted energy and and lose out on a, a whole bunch of energy due to overcapping that energy. So in this scenario of average swing timing, I assume that you would be not swing timing during adrenaline rush and you landed your swings a little bit less perfectly so 0.2 seconds after every swings basically is when you were getting that sinister strike or backstab or eviscerate to land so this is more of what i would say is a realistic scenario for especially for dagger rogues who don't really like adrenaline rushing and then timing swings it's a little bit easier as a sword rogue because your attacks don't uh don't use as much energy you, you have a little bit more room there for if you miss, but uh, at, particularly as a dagger rogue, it can be really bad to time swings during adrenaline rush, uh, especially if you get a miss. Okay, so for horde sword rogues, you can see it drops down to 26 to 27 DPS gain. For alliance sword rogues, we drop down to 4 to 5 DPS gain. And for horde dagger rogues, we drop down to 6 to 7 DPS gain. So again, this is what happens if you're not perfect and you're not timing swing timings during adrenaline rush as well. So basically you can see this is a pretty uh, marginal increase for most people outside of the Horde Sword Rogues. The Horde Sword Rogues definitely want to be thinking about swing timing, but for everyone else, it's not as crazy of an upgrade to swing time, particularly when we're talking about more average swing timing scenarios where you're not doing everything perfectly. Okay, so now the question is, should does this mean that horde sword rogues are the only ones that should worry about swing timing and that's kind of uh, not exactly yes and no so while everyone else doesn't gain as much from swing timing it's still free dps and there's the chance of bad rng okay so what i mean by bad rng is for example as an lance sword rogue you might rng proc your swords back multiple times in a row during a short fight and let's say that that proc happens at a really bad timing so two seconds into your swing you keep getting it reset and not counting the the swing damage there because you're not completing your auto attack so let's say that happens a few times in a fight now in a short fight that can actually have a noticeable impact more than just seven dps uh loss from not perfectly timing swings you might actually lose more because it keeps screwing up your auto attacks and it, you just get hit by bad rng there so Swing timing is not just a DPS increase on average, but it's also kind of a preventative measure against bad RNG kind of screwing you over if you get bad resets in a row in a short fight. So swing timing is really both an increase in DPS on average and it's also uh, a nice little preventative measure you can take against getting bad reset RNG that can screw you over, particularly in shorter fights. Okay, so that all said, there are some scenarios where you shouldn't worry about swing timing. So one is obviously if you're an Alliance Dagger Rogue, as we said at the start, you don't care about swing timing because you, you don't have anything at reset. So swing timing isn't a thing for Alliance Dagger Rogues. But outside of that, there are some scenarios. For example here, I'm back again on my Twin Amps run. So 
Twin Amps is a good example of a fight that is kind of complicated, especially if you're new to it as far as the mechanics and the positioning and the timings on your rotations and, and cooldowns and everything. So for example, for fights like this, especially if you're going into this on a brand new encounter, so you're new to this, it's, it's like your first one of the first few times you've ever done the encounter, you're still learning the strategy and mechanics behind it. Swing timing is probably not your focus there, right? You're probably need to make sure you're not screwing up your rotation, your positioning, and you're getting all the mechanics of the fight timings correctly. And then you can focus on swing timing after, right? So when a fight is new or complicated and you, there's complicated mechanics that take up your focus, that's when I would put, probably put swing timing on the back burner until you can get comfortable and learn all the mechanics and not have to focus so much on just getting the fight encounter correct. Okay, now we're back here again. So another one that I would say for not doing swing timing is new rogues who are still you're messing up your basic rotation and positioning so for example we're here like let's say i'm a new claw rogue so i got my claw equipped here i'm still learning to open with my my sinister strike sinister strike slice and dice combo and then i'm still learning oh when should i when should i use my renataki should i use my renataki now is that gonna cap me should i use my adrenaline rush my blade flurry now you're still learning all of these things if you're still struggling with getting these basics right first, get those right first in my opinion and then do the swing timing after that because just basic rotations like knowing your opener slice and dice rotation is in my opinion more important than swing timing early on. So for example if you're chasing the bus around like this, you're, you're running around, you're trying to do your, your swing timer, you, you as a new rogue you're probably using so much of your focus on just doing these basic things that you might not be able to watch this swing timer here in the middle as well and if you for example go towards uh, trying to do your swing timer before you have your basic slice and dice rotations figured out you might end up messing up your rotation over clipping it badly or using your combo points in the wrong way and you just don't want to do that because that's going to lose you more dps than actual swing timing there so my recommendation for new rogues is Make sure you have correct rotations with good slice and dice uptime. Make sure you're positioning correctly during the fight. Make sure you're using trinkets, DPS cooldowns, consumables at the right time. You Make sure you're avoiding wasting energy and combo points. And then once you get those basics figured out, then add in the swing timing. Okay, so it's still on the list of things you should work on as a rogue, particularly as anyone that isn't an Alliance Dagger Rogue, but it's not at the top of the list in my opinion. It, there's, there's other basics you should have figured out that will have an immediate improvement, immediate DPS gain right away versus swing timing which is a little bit min-maxi outside of Horde Sword rogues who obviously benefit the most from swing timing. Okay, so here's the bottom line in my opinion. As far as swing timing goes in the long term, it gets more valuable the better you go and the more you compete at a higher level. At the lower levels when other things are going wrong, it has less of an impact but the better guild you're in, the faster your guild runs, the more competitive your other rogues are, this is where that swing timing comes in handy. If you're someone that wants to compete at the top level, that's when you're going to be adding in your swing timer for sure. Alright, so that's, that's swing timing. So if you enjoyed this guide, I appreciate it if you like and give it a subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And if you ever want to catch this sort of content live, you want to ask me questions, you want to come hang out on stream, I stream most days on twitch.tv snowme. You can catch me there. Take care and I will catch you guys in the next video.